I think we can start right now um, about ignoring fashion trends. So how I got the idea. And uh, before I start, the most important thing is keeping it active. So if you have any questions, just ask the questions in chat or whatever. And uh, I make the deal with the uh, moderators and presenters that they will immediately interrupt me and ask me questions. So that's the deal. Because I only have one slide. And with one slide, it's, it's really hard to deliver a one and a half hour talk. Okay, ignore fashion trends. Why I got the idea? And someone asked me already, already from JPoint uh, whether I delivered the, the talk already. And this is what I don't do very often. I don't like to talk to talk twice about the same thing. But um, how I got the idea for this talk is um, some clients, actually um, a few clients, uh, it was last year, I think, um, asked me and said, um, just 10 years ago, you did something with us and uh, let's, let's see whether we can improve something. And uh, what I did is uh, I showed them the recent uh, micro profile and Jakarta E8 goodness. And they tell me, they told me, okay, what you did 10 years ago, um, it, it survived. So uh, 10 years ago, we had Java E5. So we had some interfaces and, uh, and it was not as clean as now, but it looks almost identical. And it also told me that there is a small department and um, uh, created the application and uh, the uh, and they were extremely productive because they only focus on on the on the business logic and completely ignored the fashion and um, and there were other de departments in this company or organization and um, and they tried several several frameworks and things and and the, and the interesting part is um, almost everything died just the um, just the um, what they did survived. So and because they focus on on the platform, and um, I think if you focus on, on on your business and then use as little as possible tech, then your um, you will survive. So that's that's the idea of the talk. How I got and um, I think this is a, also why uh, Jakarta E and MicroProfile or whatever you call it, the aggregation of of APIs are so successful still. So now, um, what's about me? So I still enjoy Java and um, I have some things like my blog, IO Live, um, FM and COM on what this all is. Blog is my notepad, IO are workshops on demand, Live is a, a interactive workshops and FM is the podcast. This might be interesting to you. And uh, the recent one was about MicroProfile in Jakarta E, for instance, and airhex.com are just the workshops. So, and this is probably the most useful slide. And what it is, is, is um, this is the um, question and answers um, one, the first Monday on the month. And you can just ask me whatever you like, and I will try to, to, to answer all the questions once a month. And all the questions are gathered in, uh, on GIST. Okay, that's this. And now let's start with that. So uh, this is the only slide I have, which actually has some content. And uh, this explains uh, micro profile. And if you take a look, what it actually is, is we have the base layer and the base layer is Java E and Jakarta E. So really, really old stuff. And on this base layer, this is actually shared between Jakarta e and micro profile. And this is this what I did in the, in the, in the old projects. There were no uh, CDI back then, but we used uh, EJBs, which are similar to CDI. So you could replace at EJB with at inject and you were basically done. So uh, the JSON P is, uh, it looks like a hash map, which has key value pairs and, um, and what are typed. JAXRS is the rest. So um, it allows you to expose HTTP to the outside world. And JSON B is like Java object binding. Now, what we have here is uh, fault tolerance, metrics, JSON web token and health. And uh, if you take a look what fault tolerance is, this is a Java API, which, uh, which allows, was built in microservice robustness patterns, basically. So we have circuit breaker, barcats, uh, retry, uh, timeout, and, uh, and asynchronous behavior. And metrics is more about open telemetry or uh, Prometheus metrics. And the interesting part is this fault tolerance provides metrics to or exposes metrics built in matrix via this. JSON Web Token is the security or authentication and authorization. So via the JSON Web Token, you can uh, encapsulate the uh, user and with his roles as, as a token and send it to the server, which is a stateless communication. 
health is basically readiness or basically it is health as uh, readiness and liveness probes and uh, like kubernetes health means um, is this uh, or liveness probes means uh, is the system alive and readiness is it up and running so um both health checks are needed if you are running in clouds um, because the kubernetes or the orchestrator has to wait until you are up and running and uh, in case you are not answering it will kill you and restart the process config is um cloud native configuration what means cloud native you can inject properties which are configured on uh, environment entry system property level rest client is uh, injection of interfaces open api is basically swagger and open tracing is distributed tracing so the point is with all that is the following so the the lower layer is java e is the old and boring stuff and the upper layer is actually stuff dictated by cloud native foundation and external external organizations so the open api is not exactly about um about uh about uh cloud native foundation this is a standalone spec so um okay so this was the basic explanation how both are working together and uh, so interesting story is the programming model remained the same for ages so there is actually no changes which is good for programmers because i don't have to rethink you know my annotations every two two years just because a new cloud api is on the horizon so that's the point so um so what i would like to do um what to, to talk about is uh, about um, api versus spi application programmer interface and spi service programmer interface and this is actually uh rather cool why because as, as a developer i actually don't care with with which server i'm working it should work on with all servers so i'm focusing on the api and the spi i white i usually ignore and uh the existence of API actually um, is the reason why I'm so interested in Java E and MicroProfile. Is um, at the early, um, at the beginning of Java, as I started as a consultant back then, there were so many application servers. For me, it was unthinkable to uh, to understand all of them. So what I did is I focused on the APIs instead, which was a great improvement or productivity in my case so i only had to learn you know the uh gms api but not every possible application server on earth and uh, before java e or application servers were widely uh in 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 incompatible and uh, with the uh with the introduction of a api we were allowed just to focus on on the programming model and don't don't care about the application servers so what are pojos pojos are basically classes and um, with uh, methods and, and, and fields and, and actually nothing else. And um, this is the programming model of Java E for years, actually since Java E5, what I, what I told you before. And uh, there were actually several clients I had with similar stories. And the one particular client, it was well, one, in, uh, one, one organization with a very small department and she created actually a huge piece of software and were still happy about the productivity. And, and back then they focused on POJOs and ignored, ignored all the frameworks or, or languages. So um, what's also very important to me is developer choice versus business decisions. So what it means is I don't like to argue with my clients what is better, Payara, Whitefly, Open Liberty, Tommy, uh, Quarkus, Helidon, or whatever. I say, okay, let's start programming and we can decide later or um, we will take whatever my client has a contract with so if this is a red hat shop we will probably use whitefly if they already have ibm so now is ibm almost red hat but back then was more towards open liberty old sun projects got payara and some host project got tommy surprisingly because lots of uh, host project had tomcat back then so um so it means uh, the uh, the what we do from from the programming model perspective on what my client is uh, is forced to do let's say almost because of political or business decision they are actually completely decoupled which is great so we um so we can postpone all the discussions to later which is which is pragmatic and agile so and um multi multi-vendor community this is what i also like so my observation was at java once back then that actually all the vendors are really work together really productively and they had really fun with each other and we still see it see it in uh, in micro profile world where for instance there's an interesting project called small rye and this this this, this is uh, used by different applications server runtimes for instance 
or back then weld was just the common foundation of of cdi and um and this is what i really appreciated that actually the vendors are working together and not necessarily against each other so this is great for stability and of course community so what it means is well, like if you take a look at wifi and uh, payara they share some common libraries and at conferences they actually uh, talk with, with with each other and, and share their experiences which is a very good thing um, for me a developer back documentation resources this was a huge selling point to java e why because the uh, the, uh, the um there was always the, the the process was jcp now it is jakarta e process but the same story you always got a pdf for your api so you could rely on the existence of pdf i had download all the pdfs and uh, searched for 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 stuff inside which was which was great because i didn't have you know to to to, to research the internet or or, or buy strange books <laughs> to lend the stuff so um for me it was uh it was uh very important to have like uh you can rely, rely on the existence of documentation so and um stability and compatibility so um we had recently a chat at the ahxfm podcast and uh actually so jakarta e was stable for 20 years and the first time they will change the api because of the jakarta e namespace after 20 years which is incredible i mean uh, if, if you look at other languages where you can see a framework which is stable for 20 years and uh, what it also means is that if you invest some time learning it um, you don't have to reinvest the time you know every two months to learn something new you can stick with that and just incrementally learn and um, observability what i mean by that is from the beginning of of, of application servers monitoring was a big deal so the application servers always exposed the in, inner workings so back then before clouds no one was interested in the goodness or monitoring but it was a huge part and right now this is actually the reason why all application servers right now uh, expose nice prometheus apis uh prometheus matrix apis uh, they expose it before with jmx and most of the servers what they do or runtimes what they do right now they wrap the existing functionality with ASCII and they expose a Prometheus or, or monitoring metric. So um, I hope, or hope, is, are there any questions? If not, we can proceed. So this is the last slide. And um, yeah, there is an AirHacks meetup. If you're interested, register. So I will, for instance, the AirHacks TV is on the meetup. So now. Actually, the, I have um, one oh. question about, hello, um, again. So I have one question, actually now, uh, there is a big release happening right now about Jakarta E, I believe. Uh, so it's exactly switching the namespaces. Is this the only thing that happens right now? I mean, this is the only thing um, like a major change happening right now, or there's something else. Well, what do you say about J uh, Jakarta E 9? Yeah, the, the, the namespace is one of the uh, greater features. The next, uh, uh, and the month just disappeared from my screen, which is a pity. So, um, the uh, the uh, the the Jakarta E9 introduced the I, I always confuse Jakarta E8 with nine, but um, yeah, Jakarta E9 is the namespace change which I really appreciate because everything will start with Jakarta EE. What they will all what they also did uh, some cleanup, so all the XML uh, based uh, APIs become uh, optional, which is for me great news. So SOAP is no more like you know enterprise standard. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Better? Okay. Um, and uh, there is an interesting project called uh, Eclipse Transformer. And what it does, it, uh, it helps you to migrate from the old to the new stuff. And um, the, um, I forgot his name, the, the nice guy who asked me the question right now. Um, and uh, what, um, what, um, Dimitri. <laughs> Dimitri, thank you, Dimitri. So, and uh, what, um, and, 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 and he's cheating because he already knows the answer, I, I, I guess, right? So, but um, what, um, what I don't, I actually do, do not expect a lot of uh, changes in Jakarta in nine or 10. And the reason being is, uh, we had a chat at the, uh, with Kevin Santa at the podcast, is that um, I refer to this as an iPhone problem, let's say, right? So we have now iPhone or a smartphone, let's say, I don't know what the current version is 11 or 12 so and uh, i don't expect you know huge changes in the next iphone release so um 
uh, what they can do is just you no know, piece of glass with three cameras or four or five uh, and one point of time it doesn't matter how how many cpus or cameras are inside it's just a phone and it's the same in jakarta e so i think it is pretty complete and, and it works really well so there is some polish required but i don't expect you know revolutionary changes what i think will more happen is in the micro profile space because a uh, micro profile is uh, mostly dictated by external innovation like for instance uh, there is an optional graphql api which will be too early to get it in jakarta 9 um, but it's becoming an optional api in micro profile or the same is true for reactive and, and kafka messaging uh, too early to include it to in Jakarta E. This is not no like uh, it is not a multi-vendor stuff, but uh, it is a part of MicroProfile. So um, and I think later in Jakarta E 10, what can happen is that Jano SQL could be a part of that. And um, what also could be really interesting is the MDC project inclusion, but not in Jakarta E 9, 9 time space. Question answered, uh, Dimitri. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Cool. Thank you. So he did his uh, framework, I wanted to say, homework. Um, so um, whatever I do, I will push it here to my junk repository on, on, on GitHub. And, um, but I will delete it after a few days. So if you like uh, to clone it. So first, I would like to show you how I start. This is uh, a script for fun. Hopefully I don't get sued by the Nice J point guys and girls, girls and guys. This is the right order. So it seems like a J point and only girls. So there's well, just one guy so far. And uh, yeah. So what happened now is I created with Maven archetype, which is uh, I font, right? So um, what happened so far? I created with Maven archetype, which is part of the uh, of uh, of this Nexus repository at Maven. Um, oh, Nexus repository at Maven, yeah. Sona type central one. That's what I wanted to say. This is Nexus, but this is Maven central. So I push it already there. And this is how I start a project, usually not at conferences rather than my own projects. And uh, what you already will see is, and by the way, the IDE I'm using is as Visual Studio Code. It just works well. And um, yeah, you can use whatever you like. So now, and now what you see here is the pink resource. And the pink resource is just the JAXRS resource just to see whether it works. And what you also see is uh, injection of micro profile, which is uh, with micro profile config. So it add inject config property, uh, property message. And um, so this is part of micro profile. And um, this is the uh, Jack source configuration and it just dictates that there should be a resources inside. So, okay, and this is the micro profile config property. At the same time, uh, I also have another project, and the project name is uh, ST, stands for System Tests. And inside this project, what happens here, there is an, um, an integration test. And the funny part is, what I'm using here is the following. There is an interface which is not injected rather than fetched, and I'm using this for testing. So in this particular project, which I use actually in all my current project look like this, I'm using MicroProfile REST client to test Jakarta EE runtime because it is convenient and because it's a part of the platform. And if I take a look, I only depending on Org Eclipse MicroProfile, which is the MicroProfile API, and uh, this J point, uh, <laughs> this J point, this uh, ping resource uh, is depend depends on MicroProfile and Java X and soon Jakarta EE. So we get two namespaces: MicroProfile namespace and Jakarta EE namespace. So now, what about the runtimes? So what I can do uh, right now is I can clean Payara, but I cannot, what is Payara? This is a, um, and uh, I can actually reinstall Whitefly. So why I cannot reinstall Payara right now is the reason being is Payara comes with port 5900 and I suspect that the screen sharing, screen sharing software from uh, uh, Zoom also uses the same port, or at least Skype uses the port, so it will block the port, it will interfere. So I configured Payara to use a different port, internal port. So th that's the reason. So I can actually clean Payara, which will delete all the projects. So now, what happens? I can start Payara right now, and hopefully it will start. And um, if it starts, it's great, because it means it doesn't interfere with my screen sharing software. And it um, started. 
and um, yeah, now we can see what happens is curl localhost 8080, and we see that this is the Pyara and 8080 health. We see that this is actually this is something already installed on the server, um, and uh, and it comes with health checks, a uh, lots of health checks. So this is um, unfortunate. Uh, kill Java and now start Whitefly. So this is a fresh Whitefly and this Whitefly should come without any software installed. And yeah, now it's booted and now see curl localhost. I only have to know the port. It's just exactly the same path. And uh, there is no health because nothing I think is installed yet. Yeah, no, no installation, no health. Okay, so now let's try to deploy the thing here. So how to do that? Um, I created a small application and the name of the application is what? And I learned that from what, oh, what sh. And uh, this is the simplest possible project you can properly have. What it does is it just uh, fires up Mavington install and then waits until it builds and then copies the war to your, to your runtime. So um, let's start what here, J point, or just do it in the terminal. This is bigger screen for you, J point, and then J11, Java 11, and what? And what what will do, it just found all servers on my, on, I have Wi-Fi 20, Open Liberty, Apache Tommy, Payara, and uh, Quarkus or Helidon, they operate differently. So what we don't need what for Helidon, let's say. So now it's deployed, it's copied. And here we see that JPoint is actually deployed to the uh, application server or runtime. And the curl health, still no health because I have no, uh, no, no health uh, installed. And the other reason being is I forgot that this is Wildflower right now. And uh, therefore with that, we see that we at least see that uh, ready deployment JPoint, it is up. So there is no particular health check. It is just a generic health check and is uh, running. What I can also rely on are the metrics. So there are some application server metrics and application are business metrics. And this is no business metrics right now. This is the part of, of micro profile. But what I showed you right now is already you know the old API uh, Java API with some microprofile goodness without actually, I only have for fun, this microprofile config, which can be configured here. So if I say, enjoy J point, J point and actually this should then, the expectation is it should deploy. Where is my what? So it deployed in two seconds to Whitefly and I just go here and ask for 8080. 8080 slash J point slash resources. And I think pink, I get enjoy J. Oh, didn't save it properly. Interesting, somewhat it cut it off uh, or is not deployed. Yeah. And for no reason, enjoy J was good enough. And I just, um, oh, let's see, I, I, it has to work. So I, so just, um, I was too fast typing and didn't recognize the change. Now it deployed again and uh, just see, enjoy J point. This is what I wanted to show you. I was too fast switching the screens. So, um, okay. So this was like actually the basic thing, but let's see how both are working together and I'm using stock Whitefly 20. So there is uh, no, I just downloaded the full server and it already comes with full micro profile and full Jakarta e support. So I don't have to care about, about the separation. And by the way, if we take a look at the uh, POM XML, you see that I'm only using two dependencies, Jakarta e, which is basically Java e and then micro profile. And the micro profile comes with all the cloud stuff and the Jakarta e profile is the old stuff, I'm, I'm, which is a part of the title of the session. And um, what we could actually do right now, I could get rid of this one and it would still work. So I could actually use Whitefly. Um, yeah, it should still work. So if I just comment it out. And if you take a look, so it is still, everything works as expected, 
uh, this we are in the system test so we have here because uh, there are some common a base layer between between the um, micro profile and Jakarta E. So now let's um, what, what we can do. So what we actually could do here, I could create a uh, a new object, call it let's say a talk Java, and just add some title title and let's say length. And uh, this is interesting language I wrote now. It should be like this. And then public talk a convenience constructor. And this is a string title and uh, int length. So, and just use it like this. And then, and if you have questions, And also heretically questions like, you know, this crap never worked, why it should work right now? So feel free, feel, 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 feel free to, to ask me. I'm a just developer, I'm happy. I'm actually confronted with uh, such questions all the time. So now, talk and um, pink resource can now return the talk. And I can say this is new talk. And then uh, I think it was 42 or something, or uh, it is supposed to be 42. And then I have to say, you you are producing produces media type. Okay, let's see. Uh, I don't need this. Build that. And we see that this is actually a JSON object, so so it is working. And on top of that, what you get for free now, another specification called OpenAPI, or prior to OpenAPI, it was Swagger. So I know that if I go to OpenAPI, and in case of Whitefly, I think this is the, the, the other port, not even this. I think Whitefly cannot expose the open API yet, so I'm not sure. Let's see. No. There's um Whitefly is not um open API compatible right now, the, the, the version 20. But I would see I would see the uh, swagger definition. Um is it a problem with Whitefly? I actually don't care a lot because I can still start my Payara and, and work on work on that. It's exactly the same code. Okay, now. What we have right now, we have a JSON B, which uh, object which is exposed, uh, which is exposed to the outside world and rendered as JSON, and we use MicroProfile Config as well as the client. And the client, I didn't start the client yet. It goes to 88 JPoint resources, and it uses this pink resource client, which is pink, and there is a response. And I think I'm asking for JSON here, no, for string. And uh, I said not now, so it should could work. So let's see. So I switch to ST, ST, and then say Maven test or clean test. Uh, actually, no test. Uh, te yeah, no. Face safe integration test. I would like to launch my integration tests, and uh, before that, I would like to compile. So let's see should execute a test and what we got back is my where is it yeah this is the json string this font is too big for me so um this is the uh the json string so what i did i perform a system test which is a standalone module which goes to the first module and fetches again there are no external frameworks just the boring old stuff and this thing will probably work in few years after jakarta e9 uh, modification and I would say not only good enough you saw how quickly it started I, I didn't have to decide you now which application server to choose I can just you know use whatever I like for instance what I could do right now is say okay this white fly I'm bored fly so let's see what about open liberty so if I launch liberty uh, hopefully 
there is nothing installed strange on the Liberty. And, uh, and then go with the curl. Then you see connection refused because Liberty runs on 9080. And now I get the schema back. Um, and the schema So uh, start Liberty. There are also several projects deployed, and this is the recent. Uh, now uh, it should be actually empty, and I would like to deploy it again. Oh, of course. My uh, what is also Java. So if I kill Java, I also killed kill the tool. So this will. I just have to restart it. This hopefully deploys everything to Liberty. And now it says application JPON started in 0 0.9 second. And uh, let's see if I just go here and say uh, curl 9080. I get the Swagger API, as you can see, with default default title. And um, what I also get here at this level, the matrix. And what I also get is the health. So health. And health is status up because I don't have any health started. So um, what I showed you a little bit is the you know the multi-vendor way. I, I started Payara, deployed once, then uh, re installed actually Whitefly, reinstalled this to Whitefly, and now I'm using uh, already installed uh, uh, Open Liberty with as I remember just microprofessor port. So are there any questions in the chat? Oh, Dimitri. Yep. Oh, yeah, that's me. Let me unmute. Okay. By the way, uh, so I, I'm quite fascinated about the way you actually juggle all this code around the servers. But there's one question from one of your fans. Is uh, you? It's a little bit uh, not to the topic, but there was a wonderful book, uh, Java E Patterns Rethinking, which was published back in twelve uh, two thousand twelve. Uh, yeah. Two thousand twelve. Uh, Will you actually be uh, publishing a new version of it with the rethinking about group great, or uh, and are there any patterns right now from your talk which can be part of this book? Yeah, I think I could remove some patterns from the book because uh, make it even thinner because of micro profile. And I didn't wrote another book because I think this book is still up to date. And what you did this. This talk is not about the patterns. As you can see, I didn't organize or I actually organized it yeah, with the boundary, which was described actually in the book. And the idea of the book, actually all startups I currently working with are based on the book, so the structure of the projects. And the feedback from developers is great. And actually, I didn't want it to mention the book, but uh, the idea are actually the same what I talk you right now, right? If you focus on the business, and this is what I describe in the book, and the book is probably eight years old, it still holds holds up, so there is actually nothing to change. And um, which patterns were not available in the book were uh, or were available, but you could do it easier, is for instance something like a retry, fallback, circuit breaker. There are just annotations you apply on the on methods, and I wouldn't call it pattern anymore. I would just call it, you know, just apply the annotation on the method and it will work. So um I don't think uh, you can change a lot um, just for you, you but keep it se secret. Uh, in the next few weeks, there will be a new online course about MicroProfile and Jakarta E, but this is not about patterns, more like how to build applications, what I'm, what I'm doing right now. And um, yeah, this is, this is the basic answer. So uh, what I really do is I structure the software always the same. So uh, this is also timeless. So I, c I would like to show you this. Um, so in, um, for instance, right? We are in JPoint, and let's say we would like to create, just for fun, a new video conferencing software, just for fun, right? So then uh, this air hex is the, I think it would be, we need a folder, minus P, and this would be, I think, RU, JPoint, and then uh, let's say vMix, just for fun, and then it would be a, a business component called, like, like say, sessions, and then inside this, I would have boundary, I think this is pipe, right? Or uh, I don't know, control and uh, control and entity. And this is what I did, let's see. So then what should happen is we have in Java, uh, yeah, almost, no time for that. We need 
that. It created a file. I'm thinking in Java, that's the problem. So this should be better. So, and now we have uh, RU sessions, boundary control entity. And the idea being, uh, being is in boundary, you put just the business classes. So what you would add, for instance, you have a, a uh, sessions res uh, resource Java, and this comes with uh, path sessions and, you know, string uh, expose with get, and you are ready to go. So this was like, you know, time to market and uh, hello, J point like this. So, and, um, and with that, um, it becomes available and this was boundary. So what I would have in the same folder, I would have like a facade with some business logic and control is optional. What control is like reusable business logic. Let's say uh, the sessions will involve, you know, talk to speaker, set up the connection. So the, in controls would be, you know, speaker communication, connect, connector setup, set up, screen sharing setup. This will be controls, just POJOs with business functionality. And the entity is just the data. So for instance, the talk from here would be actually an entity. So, and, and this is like, you know, ignoring the fashion. In 20 years, if there is a video conferencing software, you get exactly the same structure. So it, we, we don't care whether we have you no know, reactive messaging, messaging, whatever. Talk is a talk. What can happen is that instead of Java object, we get a JSON object, but at the end of the day, it's an object. So actually, on all my JavaScript projects, we have exactly the same structure. And I was told in some projects that uh, some architects are unhappy with my structure, because if you think about that, it is really hard to, uh, to, to, to or it is impossible to prepare a template. So um, you have to know upfront, you know, with which business object the developers are dealing. So you cannot just have, you know, nice template for everyone. And this is like you, you are forced to think, which is actually not a bad, bad thing about, you know, how, how to structure the project. So um, this is the same structure. And by the way, this boundary control entity was not invented by me, rather than it is an old structure from before even UML. And it's called agile, uh, agile uh, modeling thing. And the, the diagrams are, are called robustness diagrams. And why I'm doing this ancient, you know, naming? Because I don't have to discuss that in meetings. Let's just say, look, it was already invented. You know, it is described in multiple books. The books are not for me. So just use, you know, just use the names. And if you don't like the names, write another book and I will use your names. So uh, just, you know, semantic over, over discussion. Dimitri, you're happy. Uh, it's yes, exactly. By the way, the guy that asked this question is also called, his also his name is also Dimitri, and I think he's ah. he's totally happy. So we both Dimitris are happy. Thank you very much. Let's oh, go. Ahead. Yeah, the, 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 the uh, duality of Dimitris is happy. Then you know what can go wrong, right? <laughs> yes. Perfect. Yeah. So now. Go ahead. So um, I don't know whether whether the small what deployed something or not. Uh, and why this happens is I can tell you because um, Visual Studio Code tries to uh, ma mavenize the project and deploys the war and, and they compete uh, about the war. So this is not really nice, but uh, I just wanted to show you, you know, without any plugins, without how the fields of Jakarta and micro profile, profile without any, any tricks. So uh, just bare metal with, you know, uh, conferencing software running also on my machine. So we have that now. Um, what I can what I can uh, show you uh, show show you uh, in addition to that is the following. Uh, let's say um, I'm just curious whether the session is actually available. So curl, not health. Uh, it was J sessions, I think. Courses and sessions, and we see hello J point. So this thing was deployed. So, um, and of course uh, we get injection, but let's think, let's think about, we have here in the control and we had speaker connection, right? And the speaker connection is more crucial than I guess Kubernetes because uh, speaker health is very important in, at conferences. And the speaker health is just a application scoped object, which comes from actually CDI or Java with a, uh, with a micro profile annotation and 
I'm alive. This is good. So implements health check. Implements health check. I hope. Um, I don't implement many health checks because you only have a view per project. It's not like you're implementing 500 health checks per project. Return, return health check response, and it's enough to stay up and say, you know, speaker is alive. Dot build. I don't think even you need a builder. Just that. So uh, liveness. Okay, let's see whether it is enough. So uh, this should be deployed. Don't even know whether it pick it up. And then run this. This is available. And then health, I would expect that the health check is included. And as you can see, data name speaker is alive. And this is actually a nice, you know, complement to, um, to, to Matrix because what I like to do is uh, different subsystems. This would be, for, for instance, a new chapter in the book about uh, observability because I don't have one health check. I have multiple health checks and they are usually controls. For instance, is, you know, is the speaker alive? Is his connection alive? Is the speaker ready? Right, so I'm ready to talk. Yes, now we're ready in this probe. So you could have, you know, for every control or for every business package, I would expect to have a health check which exposes the health of the subsystem, whether the database is running or not. And then you will see many such uh, health checks. But health checks. But what you can see here is checks status up. If I change this to down, the speaker is down, which is probably alert in the J point headquarters. So if I do this, wait a second, is it deployed? So if I just ask, you see, so the speaker is not alive actually, he's down and the entire thing is down. And I think I get 503. So you get 503 service uh, unavailable. So the cool story is also here, you know, um, you get more frameworks are coming and going, but this health check actually, Will survive. So um, the, the basic idea is, if I just go to the to the to the endpoint and ask it, I get 503 in case uh, the speaker is not available. And if the speaker is alive, you get back you get back 200. Uh, and but when it deploys, so you get uh, 200, which is uh, a very good news. So 200, and you see then the additional information. So actually, this here is already really helpful because I see all my subsystems how how they are working. And in the uh, my, my recent project, we also checked: is this enough? No space on the on the on the file system. Uh, can I actually write and read from file system? So you can introduce synthetic transactions, which are also timeless. An old principle, I don't know, 20 years or or more, um, and completely you know aggregated here. So now we have that. Now let's say let's let's go ahead with the uh, speakers speakers. So um, what you can have here, the speaker. Let's say we need here. The actual speaker and the speaker is hopefully speaking about nice topics string uh, talk return hello oh please ask questions yeah and Dimitri will answer so we have this and now um, I can just inject the speaker. I can inject the speaker to resource. That's that's interesting, right? So um, yeah, speaker talk. As you yeah. as you're talking, actually, as you're typing, I mean. Um, so people are asking yeah. service discovery. Is there something like specification about it, like service discovery, or not yet in micro profile? I, I don't even know that whether it will appear in micro profile. And the reason being is first, what I observe is a trend towards um, uh, registry type. You see, registry type. Uh, a trend towards. Um, lesser microservices and, and, and larger microservices communicate with each other. And if you only have, you know, five to 10 microservices, I don't, I don't think you need really service discovery. Also, 
service discovery is already a part of Kubernetes. So uh, you only have to know the name of the in the cluster. And if you have a nice names, like let's say our system would be a J point. If I deploy this to Kubernetes, I can rely that I can access this via HTTP J point done. So, um, and uh, Istio becomes a part of OpenShift, which is part of, I mean, not, not discovery, but service mesh, something similar. So um, the question back to, to, to the guy, to the girl or guy, probably girl here, it wasn't just girls in J point, uh, who uh, asked the question is, um, what you would like to achieve with service discovery, then you get an answer for me, because in my real world project, I get lots of questions about service discovery. And if I ask why you need it, no one knows. So it sounds like, you know, it's a nice question to ask, but uh, what is the actual use case? This would be nice to know. Um, Dimitri, have okay, an idea? Uh, we will, uh, we will uh, uh, return this question to Vector AB. I'm not sure I can recognize uh, whether it's a boy or girl from this, uh, from this name, but we will girl. give this question back. Perfect. But Dimitri, do you have any ideas where uh, auto discovery or service discovery could be interesting? I, I I can completely agree with you. There's a good question to be asked, but uh, every time I actually uh, try to use it somewhere, I mean, I, I really want to use it. I mean, I really search a place to use it. Uh, I usually can't find this place, but uh, yes. So uh, I would say that for now, we have enough tools to deal with the discoveries, like, as you say, Kubernetes, Istio, etc. I forgot actually the name of the thing. It is not, uh, it is uh, registry type. Inject registry type. Let's see. Ah, cool. But good you said something. So I remember, you know, the annotation. I completely, I forgot the annotation. And this is the, and this is the, I think metric registry. Metric registry. Yes, registry. So now, what I'm showing you right now is um, a trick. So actually, what we can do is please ask questions. And uh, let's say, so this is actually easy to, to find out what happens here. But um, let's say I could answer you no know, differently, positively and negatively. And um, you would like to count, you know, how often I actually answer the question or, or whatever. So you would actually capture the internal state of the speaker here, which is impossible to observe via method call. This, that's the point. So I can go here and say registry uh, counter and call it uh, answered questions, questions, and return ink. Okay, cool. Um, let's see. So uh, deploy. This is still healthy. And uh, what I have to do is to uh, invoke the J point resources and ping. And then I can fetch the metrics metrics application and no content because uh, yeah, because I need the sessions. So this please ask questions. And now I see, you know, the, the uh, counter. So what it means is we get actually open telemetry or, or open metrics um, for free. So what, as you can see is I can launch Prometheus and you can gather, you know, the internal state of the application. And um, so this is nice. What I do in system tests usually, I read this metrics as JSON. So, um, so what I do is I use that minus H and ask the server to give me a accept actually accept application slash json and what i get back is then just this and so what you what you can easily do you can you know call your microservice and then fetch the metrics via json with micro profile rest client and ask the server know how the server behaves so that's actually cool what we have is the open api so now let's imagine uh, the speaker right and this uh we need here the actual speaker and uh, uh yeah uh, yeah while you are uh, imagining so we got an 
the answer from Vector Alpha Bravo, I would yeah. say. So, uh, because we're comparing to string, a spring many times, so they say something, there is something like Eureka, Eureka. So, yeah. uh, and that's why you can, like, for example, um, set up a um, shared cache or a distributed cache, uh, like Hazel cache or whatever. But this may be an option uh, to use, but uh, as far as I see, yes, Kubernetes API will be enough. Yeah, the question is, uh, Dimitri, let's say we build an international startup. The question is, how much Eureka or a service discovery framework will help us to be earlier time to market? I can answer this right now with that, what I showed you right now. The cool story is, if you go to a startup and see, look, the only thing, focus on business, then you will survive, you know, whatever. And then you only have to know one dependency right now. I'm only running on micro profile and then in Jakarta E. And then if you know business takes off, then you can, you know, ask, uh, for instance, Quarkus for commercial support, Whitefly, Payara guys, they will happy to support your commercial support, but you don't have to. So what it means is we get, you know, the goodness from the beginning. And later, if you become Facebook, let's say, then it could be interesting to have something like service discovery. This is what I think, or Netflix. But I don't think, also on my projects, they, there is no place for service discovery. I get a question all the time, and I really think about that, and it's hard. What I see a point, service mes meshes. So meanwhile, I see a benefit of a service mesh, and there's one killer feature. If you really need a secure communication between microservices, service meshes are great for certificate distribution. So this is the killer use case but because I don't like to deal with certificates, but, uh, and, and I can just say, okay, this is <laughs> someone else's task, but um, anything else, I, I I don't get it. So, and and shared caches, if you think about that, even in Kubernetes, the shared cache will be probably uh, available via REST. I mean, what else, or, 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 or you know, a, a binary protocol. So, um, yeah. Okay, Dimitri, I hope you are somehow can happy. Um, Thank you. More and, happy. Uh, Just go in ahead. You, you are always happy. That's the problem. No, so, yeah. <laughs> no, 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 no. There are many situations where I'm not happy, but not today, I guess. Perfect. Thank you. So great time and great weather in Bucharest, I think. So now. Uh, I'm um, in Sofia right now, by the way. We met in oh, Bucharest. Sorry, Sofia. <laughs> yes. Oh, sorry. Sorry. You see, now you're no more that happy because I'm going to city. Okay. Cool. No, 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 because of your questions, I forgot actually what to write now, but uh, let a second. Um, ah, I know, I know, let's say speaker. The speaker here has uh, a name, which is public. Um, let's say name, but the age. No one should know that I'm 25 years old, for instance, right? So this is, let's say, this is highly confidential. So how to, how to do this? 60, 60 uh, years old because Java was uh, is 25. So I started with Oak, so 25. Speaker, speaker, and this is uh, name and age. Again, and this is just for convenience. And uh, this name equals name. By the way, what you could do, use right now are records, Java 14 records. It is already supported by CXF, but not built into the major application servers. And I didn't want it to you know to switch the entire environment. What you see right now is what I'm using in projects. There's no, no, no magic here. Yeah? H. So we have uh, this, and um, and we are exposing the speaker again, and with a new, new uh, speaker, speaker, and this is uh, Adam, and he is 26. So now, okay. So we have that, and um, yeah speaker service and the speaker resource we need the speaker here as well with producers producers json because uh because uh this is necessary for open liberty as it would say i only understand uh, json if you ask me uh media type and this is json Okay, and speaker needs import, looks like. Cool. So now what we get is the following. If I go here and ask for 
open API. So I get, oh, the open API is JSON, also interesting, but actually most of the services need YAML. And what you will see is, for instance, you see schemas talk and uh, is the speaker somewhere, resources ping, resources sessions, and there is a schema still string, so it's not deployed, but it should switch in a second. And there is a speaker. There's a type object, properties, name, and age. And um, actually, if we go here to localhost uh, 9080, open RP, and I think it is swag uh, UI, I hope. No, open liberty swag UI. I forgot the URI. So, and then in one point of time, we need just an URI UI. I know something with UI, the endpoint. Dimitri, it's your job. I just need the uh, open, uh, open API UI. This is what we need. So this yes. is so, so perfect. Ah, uh, you were quicker so, than I was, yes. Yeah, this is always the case with Jakarta in MicroProfile. Don't ask questions. You know, answering a question is slower than actually hacking, right? So, guess, sessions. Absolutely. So, so we have the sessions here, but what I wanted actually to do is to do a post. And this is void, except speaker, speaker, oh, different. And uh, here is the speaker without two strings, so it will look terribly, but uh, and what I need, of course, is a default constructor. I always forget that public speaker, so, or parameterless constructor. So, okay, now let's deploy the thing to all the servers and then back here and uh, reload the Swagger thing. And you see get, hopefully post somewhere. Uh, this is the uh, speaker, right? Speaker, yeah, but default. So not deployed. Oh, there's an error. You are typing just too fast for this thing to recognize that it's already updated. This may be. Post produces speaker uh, and we are in the sessions. Oh, and I implemented something strange. Source to XML converter, whatever, was not part of the entire thing. And uh, let's see. So I will talk now slower. Okay, I accidentally imported non-existing class. This is a magic, but let's see. So now uh, this is available and now slower and we have post. Okay, so now you see here name string age. So I could actually try it out and do something with it. But the cool story, let's say this age I don't like the age because uh, it is uh, no one should knows know that I'm actually that young. And for this particular reason, what I can do is I can actually say here, I think it is schema. And this is uh, read only true. So, and what will happen right now is, and also example, uh, schema, what you can provide, an example, right? Example, exactly. And the example is uh, Duke, surname. And here an example is, for instance, 26. So if I do this and uh, deploy it once, cool. And now come back here and reload the page. You will see that at the post, the age disappears because it's read only. And uh, uh, the uh, schema is this, this was speaker. You see example Duke and uh, the example is 26. So um, again, what I did right now, I just focus on business and I forget all the funky frameworks. And still what we are having is just open API 
without any external uh, external um, um, dependency. And we are just relying on, you saw, now we are running with Open Liberty. We started with Payara, then moved to Whitefly. And we could actually go to, to Quarkus in a second, if, if you like, because it will also work. So now, um, one thing is the greatness of this approach, the separation of uh, API and SPI is the following. As you probably noticed, my war, what I'm shipping here is 8K because there are no frameworks involved. It is crazy fast to push this to the clouds because daily I will only have, you know, to push the 8K and no more. So if I would like to do the same with Whitefly or uh, Payara, let's say. So Payara is a little bit underrepresented. So go a little bit with the fish, otherwise it gets angry. So um, Docker file. So I only have to tell, I would like to use today Payara. So now I have it and now I can build the entire thing and this wor works with maven clean install and then docker build minus d adams J i point. hate to interrupt you yeah. but since the live stream is have to be changed because we have the pipeline of the next speakers who is preparing with their talks live so but anyway yeah. i believe we can continue in the zoom uh, in the zoom, uh, in the zoom room yeah the, right the reality yeah the reality is that we still have a couple of minutes uh, if you need but yes after that we have to <laughs> yeah sorry for yeah, for yeah. disturbing you by the way whatever you're no, typing no, no, no. and switching it to to other server there was a question from Vasily said okay but isn't that easy to do just with a glass fish and some rest isn't that enough <laughs> uh, why should we use all of that uh um, let us say, set of API, set of specification to do this. Uh, your question was why, uh, why, why there are so many, just so many specifications? Ah, um, I, I'm just thinking because the question is, um, as the, un the answer is obvious. There are so many specification because, um, uh, but, but, so the question is first great. It, it really depends who asked the question. This is also my opinion. From my opinion, there should be only one API which includes everything. I don't like, you know, the modular API ap approach. So what I really appreciate, I'm already angry that we have actually two, Jakarta and MicroProfile. From my point of view, we only have one. That would be great. Just take the API and go with it, right? No fiddling. And um, so we have both because there are two community and this Eclipse MicroProfile is motivated or driven by uh, the Cloud Native Foundation, more or less, and the Jakarta by the vendors, and vendors shipping you now four times a year, and micro profile uh, even faster, and th that's the reason. And um, the question is probably why I started with the entire enterprise, not just with REST, right? This is probably the question. Why I kind. using Jakarta E and not just HTTP? If you think about this, I'm not even what. Okay, I show you the alternative. What we have to do is. To, do, to use uh, JAXRS API. So we will have to search for JAXRS API, and this here is one, so probably somewhere, and we will find the API, and uh, it is probably here, let's see. Okay, so, uh, and how to start, so this is harder to find, but JSON P API, so if you go there, this is easier to find. And somewhere here, there's getting started is the Maven coordinate. So I will have to know that there is something like this. Then I will have to add, you know, five seconds later with the, with the, with the talk, I will say, okay, now we need JSON B. Then I will have to search for JSON B. I am just too lazy. So I'm at one API. It doesn't matter. The entire thing I'm building right now is 8K. So it is absolutely pointless, you know? So th th that's, you know, so there is no benefit. Yeah, there's one API, very but uh, the last question is very fast, please. Uh, maybe we should add another reactive API, reactive streaming API. Wouldn't be that too much, or uh, let's deal with the thing we have right now. Uh, is this already part of MicroProfile, but not the platform? If you go to the small right project uh, and search for the projects, there is a reactive uh, messaging and reactive stream operators. We are using this already in uh, real world projects. For instance, what you can do with it, very simple. Uh, you have one method with two annotations, incoming and outgoing. 
And you can map the incoming parameter to, for instance, Kafka uh, topic and the outgoing to WebSockets and you are set. So um, yeah, it is not a part of the, of the platform yet because it's too new, but it will become part of the platform and it's supported by all servers right now. So Open Liberty, Whitefly, Quarkus, Helidon, uh, absolutely reactive. You don't need any external dependency, but in our example with these speakers, you know, speakers are not that reactive, you know? Okay, thank you so, so much. It was really, really awesome. I think that uh, it's now time to move to our discussion zone and probably continue with live talks um, with our audience because you see we were very active and I hope we'll be still yeah. active in this zone. Yeah. Okay, thanks a lot. Uh, thank you very much, guys. And all the, our attendees may join the Zoom discussion uh, with Adam. And uh, uh, Andre and Mita, thank you very much, too. Uh, this was very interesting, but yes, we are out of time, so I have to interrupt you. Uh, thank, thank you, you, Adam. It's a great honor for us to have you on board this year. Thank you. It was fun. Yeah, and see you later, guys.